Welcome. In this video, we're going to look at yet another example or another question on projectile motion. So here we've been given a scenario where a boy is standing on a cliff and then he throws the ball at a speed of 30 meters per second. The question says, a boy is standing on a cliff 1.5 meters high shown in the figure below throws a ball horizontally with a velocity of 30 meters per second. So we have this one, this boy standing here, which is 125 meters tall. So from this point to this point, there is 125 meters. And then he throws the ball horizontally with this velocity, which is 30 meters per second. Then covering this, this distance before coming or before hitting. The, the ground. Now, the first question says, determine the time of flight, then B, the horizontal range covered by the ball, then C, the speed of the ball and direction just before hitting or striking the ground. So this is the question that we're going to consider looking at in this video. So make sure that you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that every time that I post a video, you are going to be seeing, you will be getting notifications. So let us see, proceed and see what we can do with this question. So we have this diagram here. So the boy is standing here. He throws the ball horizontally, then it goes like this. Just horizontally. Now, we we know that this is covering this displacement from this point to this point and we know from the equations of motion that we know we know that y is equal to ut plus half h squared and since we know that this is um, this is vertical displacement which is this one 125 and so this one the u, which is the initial velocity, must also be in y. So this should give us uh, uy t plus half a t squared. But since the boy just threw this ball horizontally with this velocity, this tells us to say u in y is equal to zero. There is no uh, vertical component of the initial velocity. So here we can say y is equal to zero plus half h squared. From this point, we can go on by saying y is equal to half h squared. So this one we can multiply through by two, so here by two, also here by two, so that we have two y is equal to h squared. So from this point, so we have 2y is equal to h squared. Now, since this one is only influenced by the acceleration due to gravity, or since it is just only under the influence of uh, gravity, we can say this one, where is y, we put this, and where is, where is a, we're going to put g, and where there is y, we are going to put this one. But here, let us choose to say, okay, let's say we take this as negative g. And if we want to take it direct, we can still take it direct by just putting uh, g here and y here. But let us take it to be this. Then at the same time, this is displacement. And as it is coming down, this one is changing the direction. Instead of going up, it is coming down. And the downward direction possesses a negative sign because uh, a vector quantity encompasses both the size, which is the magnitude, and the direction. So the direction is a negative direction. So we can say 2 times negative 125. This should give us um, negative, okay, negative g, g squared. So this one we can divide by negative g, even here 
uh, negative g and what we're going to have is g squared will give us so a negative here we're going to have so this negative and the negative will cancel and we're going to have is 250 over g so let us take g to be 10 10 minus person squared so we are going to have 250 over 10 so which will give us 25 so this is g squared now to find the value of g we simply introduce the square root here and also here so that this and this will cancel and what we're going to have is g square root of 25 is 5 units seconds so this is the first part which is the time you, the, the, the time of flight so this is the time taken for this ball to fly from this point to this point let us proceed the horizontal range so let us find the horizontal range which is the distance from this point to this point so so we have b horizontal range this is simply the distance from this point to this point which is the given by dx t and velocity velocity in the x component does not change it it is constant so this is dx this is dy so for dx it does not change it is constant throughout but for dy it keeps on changing as time passes so this one as it goes down the vy changes also for vx it is the same so for vx we have this one which is 30 30 meters per second times 5 seconds that's the time we found so 30 times 5 we are going to have 150 meters so this second and this will come to our point remaining centimeters so from this point we have found the range we can go to the speed of the ball and the direction before striking the ground so this is speed of the ball we know that v is equal to u plus a t so we have v1 is equal to zero plus negative g which will just be negative g t so here v y is equal to negative 10 times the time negative 50 meters per second the direction or the reason why it is negative is because it is coming down and velocity is also a vector quantity which takes into consideration uh, the direction so from this point since as it comes down as the, the projectile comes okay the velocity it is going to have is a combination of both x and y so this one the, the, the magnitude of the velocity is found by v is equal to or v squared is equal to vx squared plus vy squared so from this we are going to find that v is equal to when we introduce the square to, to both sides we are going to have vx squared plus vy squared so this one we are going to have vx vx it does not change it is constant so we have 30 squared plus negative 50 squared this one is going to give us 58.3 meters per second as the magnitude of of the velocity just before striking the ground now we are going to find also the angle so let's say so this is Z, the magnitude of v so there is also let us find also this angle so this one we can use the three equations to figure out this so if this is 30 and this is 50 we know that tan theta 
m theta is equal to opposite which is 50 over and this one as it since it is in this direction it is a negative 50 but the, uh, the angle will be the same so this one we have over this one we have 30 okay so theta so this and this can you can cancel and we are going to have this theta is equal to tan inverse of 5 over 3 and what we are going to have is 59 degrees now this one we have a scenario versus this one so if we take this as point of reference so this one it is 59 degrees below 59 degrees below the positive x-axis this is how this question must be answered thank you so much for seeing the video